if you're if you're passionate about that field that you're in, um, then you're already halfway there, I think. And then you need to also be committed to do the work because I think passion will drive you to want to be better, and and therefore the work will, you know, come second. Um, and also, I guess, um, just keep trying. Just you know, it's not easy. It really isn't easy. Oh my word! It's not like you get up in the morning and 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 remember the guys also think that photography is the camera and getting out there and taking a picture. But there's so much more behind it. Like, what is the photo? Why are you taking that picture? What is the subject matter? Why is it? Why do you want to do this? There's so many. Like, it's not just rocking up and taking a picture. Like that is the button part is almost like what's uh, this great wildlife photographer I was watching. It's like that. That's five percent of the whole thing. You know, that's it. It all comes together, but it's that whole everything that came from behind to build that point. So work hard, be passionate, drive, push yourself. Hey guys, and welcome back to Sessions, a video podcast brought to you by Pro Studio, where we discuss an entrepreneur's business life and while we edit some social media as well. So, hi guys, welcome back to a brand new episode of Sessions. Today I'm joined by the one and only Sean van Eerden, founder of Creative Lab and award-winning photographer. So, welcome to the show, Sean. It's great to have you on. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Welcome back to the studio, man. As always, this is your second home already. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, I want to get right into the show and ask you 10-15 uh, minute questions about who are you, what is it that you do, give us a bit of your background from childhood, how did you start becoming a photographer, and yeah, elaborate a bit on what is it that you do on a daily basis. Okay. Um, yeah, as I say, I'm Sean Creative Lab. I'm a commercial photographer. Um, I basically, how did I, well, where do I come from? Let's start over there. That's probably a better idea. Um, I basically was born in South Africa in Paul um, and moved to Namibia when I was 13 years old with my dad when they were moved over here to work in Volvers Bay. So mm. we went to the rust bucket there. <laughs> and um, I've been, I basically grew up there, um, stayed there until pretty much I met my current wife and then we decided to go traveling. Went to to the UK and we got stuck there because obviously traveling is fantastic. Yes. It is cheap and convenient. <laughs> Um, and then we spent 12 years there. Um, and then when the Bambinos arrived, the little ones got there, we decided, listen, we want to have the kids to have a quality of life that we had here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and obviously all our family is here. Um, so it was a hard decision, but we decided to move back. And um, we've been back now eight years, I think. And yeah, still happy with the decision. And yeah, uh, yeah still enjoying life. There's a lot of now. freedom here. Yeah, there is. There is. <coughs> There's freedom and there's also not. And it's the same with the UK. There's freedom mm. and there's not. It's like, depends what you want to do. Get away with a lot more here. It's Pros and cons at every place. Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm. Eh? Like, um, especially when it comes to like photography. You can, you can kind of uh, uh, get away with doing a shoot on the street, whereas over there you need permits and you exactly. need this and you need to block traffic and you need to health and safety and stuff. <laughs> and like you do, you'll, I take just want to take yeah, some I just want to take a picture. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I remember taking a picture of a building once. This guy come running out to me like, he might not do that. It was like, just a public building. It was like, oh, all these rules <laughs> and regulations. So it is frustrating. But tell me, in, in London, you worked as a photographer as well. Was it no. getting into it, starting it out? No, what actually, there I was actually, I left, uh, I was actually an art director. Mm hmm a designer, really. Um, and then I went over there and I couldn't get work when we first got there because I was like, South Africans aren't allowed to get mm. permanent work. Um, and th so I did all odd jobs, telesales, all types of stuff. But I actually was a designer. Um, and then eventually, 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 some company was fortunate enough to hire me as a designer. And then as through the years, I got sort of got connections and then I went to the next company and then I kind of like got promoted and so it went on. Mm. And eventually ended up at um, uh, Leo Burnett, uh, London for about three years. And there I was working as an art director, mm -hmm, sort of. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then I started freelancing. But then that's where the love of photography kind of started because you would always, as a designer, you would always get these photographers who come in and say their books. And that was old school still. I mean, the guys would bring <laughs> books out mm -hmm. and, they would, and they would sell you. That's how they would sell their, their art. Not the shutter stock yeah, or anything yeah, like yeah. that. It was like... The classic books, coffee table books. Yes. books. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. like, so they got these books and you would go through them and then you would see like, wow, that's amazing work. And then that's how you hire the photographer. And that's where I kind of got the, and then I got my own camera 
and uh, started playing around just shooting kind of architectural photography mm-hmm. was really mm-hmm. the main. And being, then, uh, but still being full time employed as a designer. Yes, 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 so yeah. Like a weekend, f- weekend photographer yeah. almost yeah. like yeah, like a hobby. I was yes, enjoying exactly. that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's kind of where where with that sort of bug bit. But yes, I was a full time full time photographer. Like photography was no uh, sorry, a, a designer, art, yeah. art director. So okay. I wasn't so I wasn't really a photographer at all at yeah. that stage. Uh, m- tell me, how did you get? The, how did you teach yourself to become a better photographer? Was it that you did online training or did you assist someone? Yes, I did a lot. I mean, even with the design side of things, um, I because I came over there and I was in a totally different. Um, you know, the, the category, if you move over there, like, you know, you have to step up your game a big time. Um, and when I got to the agencies, they were like, experience, number one is a problem, uh, software, this and that, and all this is a problem. So I had to do online courses like crazy. So mm-hmm. I would spend, mm-hmm. I would go to work at least two hours earlier mm-hmm. and I would sit and do tutorials on the software and stuff and that's the same with the photography you would like see but at that time there was way less of that than Mm. there is now um so you would see go out and you would literally see what the other guys are doing and then try and you know experiment on the weekends but yes i spent a lot of time on tutorials and learning online a lot yeah and then books were a lot there were a lot of books Books around exactly books were better than or like not better but more frequently used. So I used to have a pile of books. I know back then it was also very difficult to get some proper tutorials online. Yeah, I know. That's what I said. Yeah, it was very, there were very, there were only a handful of companies that did it and it wasn't photography. It was more design and software and stuff like that. So I used them in, and, and that was great. But when it came to photography, it was more books. And the, but the great thing was I was traveling on the underground as well or trains for. So you had time. Three hours a day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so so I had, yeah. So I had, before Every iPads day. came out with the uh, screens and stuff, we were like reading and stuff. If you didn't fall asleep, and you still actually. Greeting. Yeah. <laughs> I like well, old I, school. Sleeping and reading <laughs> was basically what we did. So that's also how I, how I got uh, a lot of the photography sort of going up. Yeah dabbling with that yeah and then after like you said you moved back to namibia then you worked at Leo yes Bennett, then i was here and then, and then i came then i actually um got a, a, a position here mm-hmm. again as an art director at one of the local agencies and then i moved over here and i think i was there four years but i really wanted to freelance because that's when i just before i left i was freelancing which was fantastic it was awesome because you literally Never got involved in the office politics, yeah. which was yeah. the side that I don't mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but <laughs> you always enjoyed you always enjoy the um, fresh ideas of different people. Yeah. Um, you always work on different projects, so you're not stuck, like for instance, in a purely financial sector or a purely so. So you got moved around, and you got to work on lots of different projects and lots of different agencies you saw you met lots of people and and by exactly. doing that you also got more work because you met 100%. more people and yeah. it was great and getting around exactly. yes it was yes. awesome and people were booking you and and there was r- nice because people booked you based on the fact that you were good yeah. like they were dependable so they wanted they didn't care if you were working on coca-cola this side and then walked across the road and walked on pepsi and then you walked back to coca-cola they're like he's good we need he's him. good <laughs> we need him. no worries yes. so, and then yeah. when i came here and i tried to do that it was like no go <sighs> Complete Everyone opposite. was absolutely, you work for them, you don't work for me. Like it was like, <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. So it was, and it wasn't just one agency, it was all the agencies. So that just blew up in my face and that was a bit disappointing. I can imagine. And then, yeah, and then eventually uh, the frustration of the job got to me, which um, I think anyone who works in agency will understand this. <laughs> um, so I was basically been asked to become a creative director of several agencies. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just felt I didn't have the what it took to do it. So I realized that's kind of where I need to go, but I don't want to go there, so yeah. what now? And, uh, and uh, basically, uh, this is sounds silly, but it actually did happen. Mm-hmm. I was driving, after the frustration grew and grew and grew and grew, and I was driving to work one day, and that Nickelback song came, um, I can't remember what the name of it is now, but it said, you know, why should you do that? Like, give up, you know, like, uh, yeah, just, change, just, change yeah, just, just, yeah, just say effort, you know, like, yeah. basically. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, what makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Why didn't I hear this earlier? <laughs> Full blast, all the way to work. And then I got to work and I resigned. And then I was like, what are you going to do? It's like, ah. Uh, Okay, uh, let's do photography. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, but Nickelback. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you've worked as a freelancer before, so it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, as I see it. Well, you, you not as a photographer, not as a photographer, but as, but but as, as a, you, yeah. So freelancing, know. the 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 
the principles of freelancing, like the client relationships yes, yes, and the yes. way you do stuff is basically like an entrepreneurial thing. That's already there. Exactly. It's obviously exactly. just a skill set now that needed to yeah, be needed to yeah. upgrade and change. Yeah. And but I was very fortunate because the agency I was with, um, they also um, allowed me to do their internal shoots. So I yeah, yeah. built Kinda a already massive... Had the knowledge base before I left. So you kind of had like a client base. Yeah, well, it was just the agency yeah, basically. Yeah, that but, first but client. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. But but what was great was I would, you know, the shoots, I would literally go and do the shoot for the campaign that we're doing. So I learned what Hands I needed on, yeah. to do and it was, okay, a long journey still to go. But yeah, so that was that was great. So that gave me a, a bit of an insight into what what is needed. And then obviously whenever... The other photographers from South Africa or whoever in locally were there. I was like, like a hawk. <laughs> right? <next. laughs> what are you doing? What are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, I learned from them a lot, even though they didn't know it. But I can imagine, yeah. but at least you know the core ethics already of being a freelancer and having that self-respect of getting out of bed. Yeah, yeah, no, you have your to. Mails you need to be work, on it. Not, yeah, you need like to be on it. Yeah. I'm gonna chill on the couch till somebody phones me. This no, is not no, how it's no, gonna no, work. No, 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 not at all. You need to be like. In fact, the 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 freelance work you work twice as hard as when you on your, with someone because there's no guarantee. Like everyone just looks when at freelancers and say, "Oh, you guys earn so much, and you you know this and, and that." You have it's it like easy, dude, and it's just whenever tomorrow you want to work, someone can change, and you're not there. Like they'll replace you like this because there's no contract saying you are have to be there. There's no no guarantees, nothing. So you have to outperform and out be in someone's mind twice as much as the person that has got a job. You constantly have to be at the top of your game. Yeah, yeah. You constantly mm. have to, as you say, hustle. You have to yes. be there and you have to always, like, if someone even says, like, I know a guy, like, email, like, <laughs> contacts, you know, uh, by the way, hey, I, I, this is what I yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to. You yeah, you have, have to. to because you, you kind of get you kinda, under, I always feel you work kind of 16 hour days because once yeah, you're yeah, done totally. shooting, you go back, you edit, then you go mail, then yeah. you go do admin, no, totally. then you have to do accounting stuff. No. Oh, then sixteen is a normal day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty much. <laughs> Sleep is very yeah. rare. I then. think I, th I think it's it's something you taught me. It's uh, if you're doing freelancing, you have to do a lot of guerrilla marketing. Yeah. You need to. Yeah, but you are you. The, you no one else is going to do it for you. Exactly. Yeah. You you're the one man visible. show who does everything from you sales to admin to shooting. Yeah, and you and the thing is, you uh, you know, if you're in a job, you've 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 done that whole, like, you know, when you're looking for a job, mm. it's like every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so it's not like, because there you find the job and now you're down. Yeah. Like, there you like. Yeah, you can never be comfortable. Yeah, never, no. never, never. It's That's also what a lot of people don't understand. Weekends are not weekends anymore. Mm -hmm. They are actually no weekends, because on weekends you maybe have free time to actually try this new Photoshop technique yes. or this camera trick. And like, oh, this is again work. Yeah, this is always work. You <laughs> no, constantly totally. work, actually. Mm, totally. And mm. the thing is, like, exactly that. If, like, for instance, your client hires you for something, but you you couldn't quite get that technique in that time, then you it's at the back of your head, and you're now on the weekend, like, for next time, I'm going to get there. Or you know yeah. of a project that's yeah. coming up, you, the client doesn't have time or money to uh, afford you the, exactly. the thing. So, so exactly. now you have to, like... Go Thank and, you, and uh, uh, um, do the research on the weekend or in the evenings on the we early hours in the morning. I think that's probably the best time. Five o'clock, no, six o'clock in the morning is the best. No emails, no phones. Yes, like, exactly. Yeah. That's when it's quiet and you actually get to work between <laughs> yeah. five. You know when you have eight. to stop because the <laughs> phone start or the <laughs> yes. emails start coming in. It's yes. like oh, it's eight o'clock. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So being a freelancer, also often then you realize when you mess up on a job, it is. It's just you, you who's going to yeah, get, on you, eh? it's on you, full on. If yeah. you're going to lose that big job and you just messed up on the shoot, mm. you can't blame it on anyone, not on your colleague, not your boss, anything. It is you messed up and you don't get paid and it's in your pocket. Yeah, yeah, so and you have to live with that as well and because that's, the buck stops with you. There's yes. no, yeah, it's exactly, All it's the a hard lesson. Yeah, then you kind of know and understand, <laughs> okay, you, uh, maybe <laughs> I need to... Um, yeah, I need to always be on top of my game to not have that mistake again. Because, mm. yeah, there's no room for mistakes, actually, yeah. as a freelancer. But you're making it constantly, mm. daily. Yeah. yeah, of course. And that's how you learn. But, you know, the, the, I was speaking to someone about that last night also. It's like we, we, when, as you going on, you're realizing you need more time to prepare and get things ready because you don't want to make those same mistakes exactly. as you did last time. Exactly. So it's like... You know, make sure you got the brief right. You've read it. You know, make sure your timing is right. Make sure your um, gear is right. Make sure your, yeah. you know, the people that you're yeah. relying on are not saying you have to double check, trip, quadruple check, check that they're going to do what they said they're yeah. going to do. Yeah. You know, so it's like you, 
and then you multiply that by how many jobs are running at the same time. So it's like <laughs> it's not yes. like you can call someone and say, "Hey, can you just take a speak to so and so and so and so?" Yes. It's just yes. like you got to do that. <laughs> and the best is when you arrive on the shoot, they still have a change. Yes. Uh, and yeah. you're like, okay, let's wing this. How, what, did I pack the right stuff? Nah, okay, I can use this and this and make this. It's going to work. Let's do it. But <laughs> I, th I think once you know your stuff, I think photographers and maybe videographers as well mm. are probably the best people at crisis management. Yeah. Because you Most have to probably, think on yes. your feet so much. While the client is yelling in your <laughs> yes. ear, I want this. When can we start shooting? Where's my screen? I, want, I can't see anything on a small screen. No, no, that's, no. That's definitely, uh, you definitely have to think on your feet. Mm. I, I recently did a shoot now, exactly that. I was like, they didn't tell me that I needed something crucial for the shoot um, because they briefed me totally differently. And then uh -huh. when I got to the shoot, then uh, <laughs> I was like, uh, I can't, I don't have that thing here. And they're like, well, and it's like, okay, well, Let's move this, let's do this, let's put this here, let's try this, let's change. So you, you have to, because uh, you can't just say, Sorry, No, you have to adapt. I can't, you can't do that. They'll just go, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> good to know. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a bit, how did you, it's always that biggest question, how did you get to get your first camera? How, what did you do? Was it your part-time, like your full-time job as a creative mm, director, no. designer, that you funded your first camera? How did yes, you get? Yes, yes. Well, first camera, actually very first camera, was uh, when I went traveling. Um, uh, my wife and I, well, then not wife, but now wife, uh, went traveling around Europe and we like needed like, okay, we need, there were no cell phones. Guys, yeah, I'm telling yeah, my age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there were cell phones, but yes. there were these camera cell phones. And um, we went around and I got an old Minolta film camera, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I knew nothing about that thing. Like it was nothing. So obviously 90% <laughs> of the film that you developed was a dud. And then um, I, that was my dad's camera that he gave to me. And then obviously... Um, I decided to go SLR because obviously deleting and seeing what you mm -hmm. can see like that helps yes. a lot. It's way cheaper and it's yeah, way cheaper. That was the thing. And then I went and while working as an art director, um, I went and bought myself uh, the first, um, was it uh, that time it was the Nikon D80, I think it was. But um, that's also a very funny thing I just want to throw in there. Everyone always asks you, can I a Nikon guy, whatever. And, and, and I, I, t I keep telling people it's same, same. Like yeah, really, guys. Exactly. Like stop going on <laughs> yeah. about the Canon it Nikon is. thing. It's same, 100%. same. Because my choice was, it was the grip. Like yes. it yes. was my fingers a bit longer, so the Nikon's had a nicer grip, mm. and that was how I got in there. And then obviously, once you buy lenses, then you stuck yeah. down. Yeah. You yeah. Yes. That's obviously the thing. Yeah. 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 Once you have a certain kit to do yeah. a transition, it was so cost effective yeah, yeah, that it can ruin you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And 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 so it was your yeah, pocket money basically, and I put it aside and bought the camera. It was then quite an expensive investment. And then I still bought with a kit lens, which was kind of quite a nice range, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and just went and played around. And then obviously, as you kind of understand techniques more, you're like, why can't I get that shot? I don't understand why is it so tight and da da da. And then you go and research and say, okay, you need this lens. Like, exactly. Oh, yeah. God, <laughs> this yeah. lens. It's just it's just gonna set you back another thirty yeah, thousand. Same as the camera. <laughs> this lens. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then, and then obviously, yeah, so from there it grew. And then over time, you buy more lenses. Exactly. And more bodies but that was then again, like once you, with freelancing jobs, and then yeah. well, even your side, you are being a designer then? No, that was creative director, right? Yeah, right? well, art director, yeah. Well, art director. Yeah. And then having income, paying your hobby, so yes, to say, totally, making totally. a transition. But I never, I never honestly at that point thought I was going to ever become a photographer because, I mean, it was a really, and just enjoyed doing it. I yes, really enjoyed, yes, yes. as a specifically architectural photography. So I never even knew that was the route. So it was never a plan. Exactly. It was just like, it just slowly came. Yeah. I need now a, like a different type of lens or I need a tripod or something just to be able to get that type of shot because you saw something you liked and then you said, how do I, how do I create it? So mm -hmm. break it mm -hmm. down and then mm -hmm. you start researching and that's how the gear kind of grew. And tell me then once you started as a freelancer and you obviously realized you needed more gear, you never went to family or friends and said, hey, give me some upfront investment. I, wish. I, <laughs> I need this right now to well, become this professional photographer. Yeah. I need this room yeah, full no, of equipment. Or no, did no. you just say, okay, I have what I uh, use, what I have at the moment. As soon as I get a better job, I'll check, I manage mm. my cash flow. And then once I have, I'll just purchase maybe this lens or mm. that. I'm not sure yet, but yeah, one totally. of them. No, you, because the, the, look, <clears> guys, guys go on gear about gear too much it's like exactly yeah they think um you buy the biggest camera the biggest lens and everything yes it helps mm -hmm. definitely but if you don't shoot well with that small camera you sure as hell not going to shoot better with that exactly. it's just going to exactly. your, your 
problems, your 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 the the, the mess up. I was just about to swear there now. <laughs> you <laughs> it's fine. You go for it. Was <laughs> <laughs> is going to be even more amplified, I think, in that shot. So, okay. I um. But what I did is, uh, uh, which was also great with working the agency and doing the shoots, because I they would give me obviously not a full fee for the shoot because obviously it's still kind of like halfway there. Mm -hmm. yes. But everything I got, everything I got, I plowed into gear. So, but that was to help me, for instance, modifiers, lights and stuff like that, to be able to, because you knew that you were limited to this effect by that. So then I would buy a, a, a stand, then I would buy a light, then I would buy a modifier, then I would buy a thing. And then, then over time, then, then uh, they would say, we need to shoot this style. And then he's like, okay, what do I need for that? And then I would buy that. So luckily... I plowed all that money into gear. May, may I ask, yeah. uh, guess then at home you also lived as cheap as possible. Yeah, of There course. was no money for fancy car, for fancy watch, oh, well, shoes, no. all that <laughs> crap. You s I'm not sure your, your kids were also there already at that no, moment? No, my daughter was there. The first one was there, yeah. 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 So you have one, had one yeah. kid as well. You just got married. You maybe rented a place. We were living in a house that was the size of a double garage. Yeah, but yeah. see, that, that's a hustle you went through. Yeah. And then still you get For money five in. five years. That could maybe, <laughs> it's crazy, yeah, it is crazy. We're like. But that is the, but that that's is what it, re that's, that's really what it is about. It's, mm -hmm. It is not that you're gonna have then a big mansion and live there and uh, I see it with us as well. And in the beginning you have nothing, you just live as cheap as possible. Then you get a bit of bucks from this job And 30K is then a bit of something to have a better lifestyle or life. But am I going to invest it in that or in my future and have this lens? Because yeah. this lens, then you have this chats with people. You need this gear. You need that. And I'm like, oh, you don't. But yeah, yeah. I also need it does, to It's got to that point work. now where I've like stopped. I've kind of like gone, okay, this has enough to do now enough. because yeah. you yeah. gear crazy. You get like, I've, I bought a lens the other day. Um, beautiful lens. Amazing. Yeah. And it yeah. was for a job. But I've used it like three times. I'm like, that is... And it cost you a small fortune. Yeah, it yeah. cost half of a car I can, almost. I, like, <laughs> want to give it, I want to <laughs> sell it almost because it sits there. It's Barely heavy. It's, it, in, yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm like now I'm starting to like, let's find jobs to do something with it. But yeah, so I've got to the point where now like, unless it's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely necessary, I can make do with what I have because mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. pretty much a, a generic feel, you know, gear that to, to carry it. Mm -hmm. I don't have a lot, but... No, but it does the job. Mm -hmm. And I think totally, you have a good yeah. range of what you need mm -hmm. to do kind of 90%, almost 95% of any job that comes yes. your way. Yes, yes, totally, totally. That's why yeah. I also feel a lot of uh, people overthink it, that they need every type of lens that you have in the in the range. And you need everything to do, be possible to do all the jobs. No, not at all. You can get away with uh, sometimes having smaller, like a smaller set of gear and certain ones that are multiple usable for certain for yes, jobs. Yes, of yeah, course. There's, there's lenses that, uh, I mean, from a technical perspective, from a photographer, that um, the, the, the 2470. 2470 is like... Mm -hmm. like you can I, I, say, I told my brother, because he's also into <laughs> photography, yeah. and I said, dude, throw everything away. Just buy lens. that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Just get the, that lens. I'll be honest, we, over all lens. we worked three years with just 2470. <laughs> we did every job yeah, with because that. Because it's, it's, it's what we had. When you're doing... Um, when, when you like the lifestyle photography that I do, not studio where you're locked off and you kind yes, of got, yes, when you're lifestyle yes. and you need to move in and away and yes. it's, it's unpredictable. unpredictable. You can't go like, oh, hang on, that's a great shot. Let me quickly just change this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to go into art. Yeah, no. It doesn't no, happen. No. So you just need to, and that was great. So yeah, you can, you can, you really can. And also if you know the gear that you have, limited gear, and you know it well, mm -hmm. you can almost carve a niche for yourself in that field you know like that's true guys. There's yeah. a, i've yeah. seen yeah. quite a few photographers that have had everything and now they say like i just want this lens and that lens because that's the lens i love i, I love, love the distance i yes. love this i love this and, and the big guys actually come they're coming down again and they're yes like, exactly they're scaling down to a style yeah. that fits yeah. them so yeah gear is oh, not yeah. not the answer really. no it is not mm. may i ask how did you get to the name of uh, creative lab how did was it was wow because you know like most photographers are like i will call myself michael photography mm. or franz <laughs> photography or some weird names yeah. but it always ends with photography so yeah there was it was a very painful process because obviously coming from an advertising background i obviously always had in mind like what is the How is it eventually going to be able to be commercially viable? How will I market it? How will it, if it's my name, how does it, you know, like it's all these things that you, you have to add in, like I would have preached to a customer at that time. Mm -hmm. So I threw it back on myself and that was quite brutal. 
So I spent a long, long time. But at the end of the day, it came down to that um, I was hoping to be, because I'm in the commercial field, mm -hmm. I was hoping that the creative part of things will come out. And then obviously the, the laboratory side is where the technical grinding to make the creative thing work. So it was a combination of creativeness with the technical aspect and it was that merge so that's pretty much where creative lab came from okay. um, and once i chose the name and then i found out that hundreds of thousands of other companies in the world are called creative lab <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that I when like, you register do I change it now and it's like yeah. oh no we just go with it now i'm done yeah. <laughs> yeah but it's good you have to stick to it sometimes yeah. sean i actually want to ask you um uh how old were you when you actually made this transition uh, to photography? To photography, from being <clears throat> like actually fully employed to going freelance. I think I freelance. was 42. Okay. 40, 40, 42 around there, yeah. So quite late. Yeah, but the thing is... Very scary. Yeah, the reason <laughs> I'm asking is that I think a lot of people, they get comfortable in the job mm -hmm. and they never make that transition to actually do what they want to do. So, um, yeah, maybe... Because the question is actually what inspired you to create it. Maybe you can just talk a bit about that. Moving from your passion to actually doing it full time at a later age. Because most people think like if you're a certain age, you can't do things like that anymore. Yeah, it, well, my, in my case, it was more frustration for current situation. Um, so it was. And then obviously, you and I've. Look, what, same thing with your hustle. You kind of listen and your ears are like this about what this one says and what that one does. And you're always looking what's happening around you. And obviously there was a lot of talk about um, what is, if you're going to get it right now, live your, live your passion, you never have to work again. Yeah. Is that how it goes? You never yeah. work a day in your yeah. life yeah. if you do if what you do you're passionate about. Which is... Yeah. No, no, 100% true. <laughs> Not 100%. <laughs> no, no, but I definitely, I do it and I think it's 100%. The, the, the hard days are difficult. I understand it yeah. is definitely better. It is definitely it is better. better. But it's um, also time slaving, I find. When you yeah. sit in an office and look at the clock, when yeah. is it done? And, also you, and when you're working for a boss that you, you don't respect or that doesn't respect you or you, doesn't, you don't agree. So that was where it got to a head, basically, is that myself and my previous employee, were we, were, we just weren't seeing eye to eye. And... Um, I decided, look, I need to change. And then being that age, it was like, dude, oh, are you being crazy now? Because like, I had a family. Uh, yeah. um, I just had my first daughter. Um, I've got responsibilities there as well. And I was like, are you being selfish now that, you know, like, there's billions of people in the world that are doing this every day. Like, are they just sucking it up and doing it? And it's like, yes, they probably are, but they are probably very, very, very unhappy. And that's going to eventually hit the family life. Mm -hmm. Or do I do something that I really enjoy and hopefully, hopefully it'll go well? Because obviously there are no guarantees. I mean, yeah. I, it was very nerve wracking first year. Um, and then it was like, listen, I, what I got to lose? Like, what have I got to lose? <laughs> like, I, the, it's, it was like almost there was almost no other option because there wasn't working. So either you shut up and just... De deal with it, deal with it yeah. and, and don't moan about it or change it yeah. so and then it changed it and yeah so far it's been it's been very good tell me on that regard when how long have you been now full-time freelance as a photographer i think it's now nearly going on six years okay six years as a as a photographer yeah. and talk a bit about the challenges being a freelancer in this wow. country that's <laughs> not for <laughs> not for five hours but <laughs> <laughs> to elaborate a bit about yeah being let's start a full with the challenges yeah, the challenge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, look, sure, where do I start? It's, it's, uh, I think obviously the first thing is getting a name, mm -hmm. getting a name for yourself, because obviously at that time, and at that time they were already, uh, I think there were about four or five established photographers. Um, Tony was there, there was, um, Skulk. Lee, uh, no, I don't Paul Skulk. Skulk. Uh, uh, Paul, yeah, but Paul. he wasn't doing commercial no, stuff, wasn't commercial. stuff, but I mean, in the commercial sense, because that's mostly where my focus was. Yeah. yeah. But, um. They almost stepped out at the same time. That was random. And I thought, wow, this is like, could this be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All the commercial yeah, photographers yeah. stepped out. And then after two years, I realized why they stepped out. <laughs> <laughs> because um, in Namibia, not solely in Namibia, but I notice it here more, the, the respect for the profession does not exist. People think because you're a photographer, you do it for a hobby. Like mm -hmm. you might as well, you know, like you... It's just, they fear it's mm -hmm. a glorified mm -hmm. hobby. Um, meanwhile, in hindsight, if I look at what, when I get honest feedback from my clients that tell you, they will tell you a good 
commercial shoot that's happened has increased their business by 30 to 60 percent sometimes even 300 percent because that's you yeah know, because visual it's visual it's, we're a creative it's, yeah. is what sells the product yeah, yeah. um so so obviously the 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 lack of respect for the trade is uh, one big challenge um because people when you ask when you go into a shoot people you're like i, I would really need to know have this I really need to have that this this is the formula that helps make a good shoot they're like Come on, man! Just like, can't you just like? Yeah, <laughs> yeah just a picture. It must quick, quick, quick. How did you just get to this idea? Was it also just like <laughs> <laughs> quick, yes. quick, quick? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So that, that's the that is a, a, a major frustration and and and, and challenge. And then obviously um, f- uh, the the budgets. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I've worked, been fortunate enough to work now with a few campaigns that have come over South Africa for local brands here. Um, to obviously, you know, be shot here for the local guys, and the 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 the, the way that they, they treat the briefs you get, the 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 pre production that goes into it, the budgets that go into it, and also the respect for the photographer. Like I said, like they will ask you how does it go, not like just just wing it type thing. Yeah, they yeah, very exactly. much like this is what they want hands they, on yeah, feedback. So they, there's a very it's very mo- it's way more structured there, mm-hmm. and it's way more um, it's it's a part of the process. You know, and yeah, it's like a necessary evil sometimes. I feel. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And 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 you can see it. Like that's that's why. And when it comes, and also like the the budgets are number three times. I I was represented there by a, um, uh, you know, agency. Mm-hmm. It's not an agency agency, but it's like a photo representative thing. And she turned around and she said to me, "Your fee, you can triple it if you come and do work in in Cape Town right now. Like just if you write now, right there, that you'd triple your fee." Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, that Jeez. could help a lot. That's, that's <laughs> <Yeah>. eye opener. <laughs> Sometimes that's again, not too good not, to know right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was it was crazy. It was really crazy. So, um, but yeah, there's. Uh, I think that's probably my biggest thing in this that it's not taken serious, um, and like I still get calls on a daily basis where people will call me up and say like, um, "Can you come shoot for me? I'll give you free this," and you're like. Hey, I have a family. Mm-hmm. I have rent. I have water bill. I have food. I have to. Yes, it's a. It's yes. my living. It's well, not just a shoot hobby. For, shoot for the love of things. Yeah, yeah. 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 To, It's a. Ho- it's not a hobby. It's a, like it's a real, real, real for real job. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so, I also yeah. feel that in Namibia that they don't take that job so serious. Yeah. No, it's like you said, a glorified hobby that. And and, and oh, maybe it's also due to a lot of the fact that the cell phones and the fo- the cameras that come out now are so good and stuff. And the guys go out and they pull off a, a, a lucky shot, and then they're like, someone comments on that, and then next thing they they're the big shot. photographer. Yeah. They're a photographer, yeah. and yeah. that I think that is something that happens way too much. Way here. too much in the movie. Yes. And Sean, as a as a freelancer, what did you do with your first paycheck? Gear. <laughs> <laughs> that is good to hear. That's good. Yeah, yeah. It was, uh, yeah, just upgrade, upgrade, upgrade. Um, well, not seriously upgrade, but more like just make sure I had, like you say, that that box of go to mm. that I needed. And 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 I think um, a lot of that stuff was modifiers that I spent my money on. So you know, strobe lights and stuff like that, so that I can play a little bit more, you get that nicer look. Because um, then I was uh, doing a lot of um, dark sort of, which I still want to do, sort of Rembrandt type shooting. Mm-hmm, I really mm-hmm, enjoy mm-hmm. that, but you don't get that in commercial. No, that you much. don't. You mm-hmm. just look a bit moody. People are like, yeah, their brand's a little bit depressed. <laughs> 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 so um, that was what I spent most of it on. That's well, great to hear. It wasn't in a brand new couch, car, bike, TV, no, no, any no, of no, that. No, You're no, 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 no. You Although had to my really make. Would have hoped that probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my wife would always like because that's the other thing about gear. I would like. When I purchase something, I would research it to death, you know, mm-hmm. like to make sure because every dollar counts. Yes. Counts, yes. In the so beginning, like yes, every single dollar. Even now, really, is like, yeah. you were like, if I'm going to spend that large sum on something, it's like, oh, can I get it a little <laughs> bit less or something like this? And, you know, <laughs> oh, and it's like, no, that's that. And then you will, and then she, should, she would come to me and say, just please buy it, thing. just please buy it. I'm just like up to here with it now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's cool, your like, strategy but works. Cost, <laughs> but it costs 10, oh no, I don't know, and, and it's so much money. I was like, just please buy it, I'm tired of <laughs> hearing about <laughs> it. Yes. Tell me, do you, are you using or making use of social media nowadays? Yes, yes, I to am. To kind of make it your marketing tool and stuff? Yeah. Can you elaborate Look, a little bit about that? I have, um, I've <coughs> for a long time, 
I've kind of been seeing it happening like over time. When I just to backtrack, when I was in the UK, the mm -hmm. the in London, in that fact, the internet was just starting out there. Like guys, it's like so shock horror. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, but yeah. but yeah. it was it, it was like it was yeah five years ago. Yeah. Like really, because people were building sites. Okay, the infrastructure, and everything was there, and the government is actually promoting it. And then we started seeing how businesses relied they needed websites and stuff to be able to get their work promoted so then um social media didn't really it was there but it was not even close to being a thing and then i started seeing how the web sort of era de developed and then when i got to namibia that was like almost the same again and then when i left there social media was where social media is kind of like now here oh, okay. you know what yes, i mean so it's yes. like so it's almost like it happened there and then I'm like seeing it happen yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Because so you travel back we're, in time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're always a bit behind here in Namibia. So. Yeah, but it was like, it was more the, um, the companies that I'm referring to, the way the businesses were starting to cop onto what this tool is. And now obviously they're seeing it happening over there and like, okay, how are we going to have some of that? And so, yes, I, I, I also realized that I needed to, to get involved in this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I've started, I've still got a long way to go. I still got a lot to learn. But yes, I definitely got involved in that and started doing it. It definitely has helped. It definitely has helped. And you kind of use it as a business tool as yes, well. Yes, no? totally, totally, yeah. totally. I mean, it's, this is going to be a really weird thing for me to say now, but yeah. it actually has been the worst and the best thing for me. Yeah. Because yeah. the worst is because um, when social media came out from a photography perspective, it's got very much, and I think you guys will relate to this, um, it was more about quantity than quality. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we were like always quality, quality, yes. quality and exactly. take our time, get things right and stuff. And now it's just like bash, bash, get it out. And the customer just wants like 50 posts rather than one, you know, that 100%. type of I think the competition then, is also becoming... Yeah, yeah, and then everyone is this, so pop-ups everywhere and they just exactly. like... Everyone so is bombarding it with info. Exactly. Yeah. And so as it's getting more and more clunky and the shouting for more and more attention, the, like the... People just want, you know, like it's getting thin. It's yes. like the mm. quality is really um, diminished. Yes, mm. totally. And then, but on the flip side of that, I would have never ever had exposure in locally and internationally mm -hmm. and for myself and also for other guys that are, you know, other photographers or other people that you look for because i would have never had how how would i get onto those guys yeah normally you would just have a website as a photographer yeah, online how would you portfolio get to that site? like yeah so uh, someone will have to say to you i found this guy because you wouldn't like you, have you to wouldn't google, google it. yeah because yeah. 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 if you google <laughs> photography you will get a million pages yes. and it's not only photography it's also like business advice or yes, um yes, yes. cool projects that are happening or stuff like that so now you're like you're getting this nice mix and exposure exactly. so it's like kind of Okay. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah which uh, social media platform <laughs> yeah, do you do actually that. use the most um, for business? Uh, I actually use Facebook a lot, but I've realized that Facebook is not my platform. So I've switched. I've, I've been, I'm basically doing a whole like, let's see what works for me. And mm -hmm. I started off a lot with Facebook and I applied a lot of energy into it. And I realized it's good for exposure, but it's not really related into good um hard contacts for me okay. it's good to get the name out there but really hasn't related into hard sales or something like it, indirect or directly yeah. then i went on to instagram i think instagram is where i'd like to because that in namibia seems to be a great platform for that and uh, the south africans don't believe in us with instagram but it's actually and it's works growing out. we have actually yeah. realized that with all the sessions we do instagram, instagram is big here in and namibia. Twitter. yeah it's big yeah, it's big here yeah and and i uh, funny enough um just to go on a tangent here, one of the, the big brands that I work for for South Africa that came and did work here, I said to them, how are you going to post this on Instagram? And they said like, no, Instagram's not really a thing in Namibia. I was like, excuse me? Like, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> it's definitely yeah. a thing here. So they didn't plow anything into Instagram, which is strange. But yeah, so, um, and then LinkedIn now. I'm starting to get more information on LinkedIn because I've realized that LinkedIn is actually probably the best place for me. I haven't gone to Twitter yet. I think um, I probably will at some point, but LinkedIn for me feels like there's a little bit because it's business to business. I, yeah, I deal yeah. mostly mm. with, with um, if I was doing weddings or I was doing something which is related to the sort of the normal 
Hon är så no, but the 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 the. the yeah, say the it? general market. Yeah, the someone gen- who wants the to get people that yeah, are married, like, they won't look for. People, they yeah. will contact me yeah. via. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense, but makes complete a sense. business doesn't contact me through there. Yeah, and my core is business. Yes, and so corporate, that's yeah. where uh, LinkedIn is working for me now. Okay, that yeah. makes good. complete yeah. sense because I know mm. I want to yeah. get married. I look on Facebook. Yeah, of course, you're not going to go LinkedIn look for a thing. You know, in Instagram, you will still you're there. I think you will start looking there, like what's happening, and then once you see there, and then you go and look and contact them via this way yeah so yes for in that in that regard in uh, linkedin is starting to work more for me okay that's good tell me are you using uh pay today in namibia i did have it on but then my phone blocked up and like got too full and uh not taken it off and i'm putting it on again yes so okay. I but you have used it before and make use of it uh not really i had it on and then i had to put my details in and then my phone said are you too full and i'm <laughs> Uh, so, but I am. It's there. I'm just activated. Did so you ever get keep. paid directly for your services on Pay Today? No. Or never even try no. that. It's still EFT no. straight shoot. There, there used to be something similar to that. Mm-hmm. That that was like that. I think MTC had it. MTC Money mm-hmm. or something uh, like that. Uh, yeah, it's, I don't know the e wallet. No, think. no, no. It's MTC Money or something like which is similar but different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, that I used to use, but not anymore. So, but I do. I have to want to get back on to Pay Today. Definitely, okay. definitely want to get on that because I've seen everywhere. It's like it's. Yeah, it's blowing up. I see that a lot of businesses are using it mm. for like either the, um, first now purchasing products, but now they're also venturing further and like you can, I can pay you. Yeah, like but the I fees, just, I mean the like, fees uh, alone. You, like, like if you have a kid and they need cash, you can just transfer them cash obviously. And mm. then a lot of guys also started using it for their services. So Yeah, know, there's a, and, and the other services out there are quite there. expensive in, in if you actually exactly. look at the fees, like they're actually quite expensive. So yes, I do want to get onto it. I'll okay. do it after this. Promise. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, do you interact with your comments uh, on social media? I mean, you said you don't make so many direct sales through Facebook and so on, but yeah, but comments definitely. I mean, I, um, there's there's also an etiquette I think that I need to learn with with commenting. Um, I had once. I, generally, the the comments are great. Like, but then there's always a. One person that just you're like, why? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like mm-hmm. it's, they just angry with life, and then they throw it in there. And I actually funny story was, so yes, I do. I definitely do interact with them because I th- you think they, you know, they've had so much choice out there, and they had so much other things that they could have done, but they've decided. I mean, to, to write on your free, it's, it's 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 yes, exactly. Yeah, they made an mm-hmm. effort, so you yeah. just say thank you or you know, like or. That's and a nice so way definitely, of seeing it. Yeah, yeah definitely. They mm. made an effort. I mean, you to write, strange enough, in this exactly. day and age. Is <laughs> yeah, and it's, uh, it could be either a fan or maybe that fan is has an aunt or has a colleague or whatever who has another marketing yeah. position that could potentially be another yeah, job. Yeah, I mean, I, I, so I think just generally it's been respect in to say thank you. Um, yeah. Because wow, you like actually just made an effort because, exactly. you know, t- to see there. And so I definitely respond. Um, but obviously there is still, obviously it's trying to, understand how to deal with negative yes yes yes, yes. That, that, that is another challenge on itself because some people just n- nothing you can say nothing 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 will be in so those people are just for, for me the best comments for me the best comments are always those that um you have this new started out hobby photographer that is ranting about the lens wasn't correct for this mm. type of picture but everyone else is like, wow, great image. Just this one dude goes on about the lens. I'm like, what, what is wrong with you? Why? <laughs> yeah. D- come come and see me so I, we can talk about the lens or I can show you the lens and you can try it yourself. Maybe taking that negative and turn it into positive and helping the guy. Maybe he's frustrated. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and maybe or he just know. learned something now and he thinks like, I'm the... I'm the I know the, that's like s- cell phone photographers that w- transition overnight into professionals. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tell me, is there anything that you are really obsessed of with outside of photography, outside of uh, being in this creative world? Is it maybe to improve your kid's life? Is there anything you consume on the internet and that you are seriously obsessed about? Wow, I think it always it just all ends up with photography somehow. But yes, I definitely, I mean, trying to get my, I think if I understand the question correctly, I do for my family is number one. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always try... Maybe a hobby or something. A hobby? Well, the <laughs> hobby, any, my any, hobby is any. now my job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I must, do, okay. I must go and design again because that'll be my hobby. Okay. Um, 
No, just, uh, dude, I'm like, it's actually quite sad, but Is I'm actually fully cooking? consumed. I Brian? love cooking, yes, I love and cooking. And you're like actively following someone on Instagram that is maybe like completely outside of your creative world. It's like, okay, this dude is a mechanic and I'm actually interested in the mechanical stuff. And you follow that? Not really? Anything? Yeah, I guess on the, on the, no, not really. I think most of my world is more on the, not just photography, but creativity in general. So like, like art uh, pieces or videography or uh, movies or something that's really creative, that, that type of stuff, I would say uh, in the creative sphere, like something, a, a nice piece of music or something like it, like band, you know? So I, I really enjoy, uh, I think that also try and help balance out the photography versus the life thing, but I still love to stay in the creative space. Mm. So uh, when I'm, if it's like I would follow a, um, a videographer or like a, um, a director or something like that and just see him, his workflow, yes, exactly. and just see how he gets inspired and then listen to something cool. So I spend a lot of, if it is a hobby in sense, it's more like nurturing creativity in general. Not, not, uh, not necessarily anything. Only photography. May I ask there, is it, is it also something that relaxes you or how do you, how do you actually switch off? Is it through listening? Like, is it? Uh, the only way I switch off is actually when I go into the, f take the car and drive into the desert <laughs> <laughs> to, go, yes. to go photograph the desert. I think there I switch off. But then off. you still photograph just yeah, for the love of it, Yeah, right? but it's there for the love of it. Yeah, because yeah, no, I, yeah, that's because that's, that's, that's my relaxation. Yeah, because mm. even though it's physically and really, really draining, um, because it's like getting up early and stuff. But I, there I switch off because I don't have to worry about quotes. I don't have to worry about following up mm -hmm. on money. I don't have to worry about conversation. And it's just like enjoying this beautiful... And being in nature maybe as well. Yeah, yeah. like and just uh, enjoying the scenery. Like uh, it's uh, insane. It's really insane. So I sadly, yeah, it's pretty much one-sided. Eh? <laughs> just photography almost. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell me what's your biggest lesson that you've learned as a freelancer? Wow. If we say... Biggest failure, uh, but oh, that's there, all part of it. There's been yeah. too, too many to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> um, biggest lesson I think is, and still learning, is like you're never really there. Like if you think you're there, you, you find out that the door and the goals have moved twice as far. Like if you think like guys come up to me and they'll like, say to me like, yes, dude, you're, I love your work. You're, like, you're, like you're great and da-da-da. It's like, dude... Go look there. Just look outside. <laughs> look in the other the world. I like that's far away. You know, like so. And 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 that's a lesson. I think you never, never not relax, but you never comfortable. Yeah, you always you, you you just the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. And 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 that's a that's a thing. So you're always on your toes. Like you're always realizing it's okay. You haven't got I've arrived. <laughs> yes. No. Okay. Now I always feel when you have a certain challenge or set a goal, then you kind of reach that goal. But shortly before you get to the goal, you've realized you actually have another goal already totally, ahead. Totally. Totally. And yeah. then you're not happy with the goal that you've set yourself. So you're like, okay, I kind of conquered that, but that was easy. Yeah, and also and, uh, and that, that other goal. Because that's of that what goal, I, I need that other goal. And and because of that goal <laughs> coming, you realize that, and it, also it's a mountain, right? Yeah. Like that goal's a mountain. Like that thing I want to do, it's like a huge thing. And you're like, oh, one day I'll get. There. And then when you do it, you're like, I should have done this like ages ago. Because <laughs> yeah. that's nothing. Now yeah. there's another like. So, yeah, it's, I, I think it's guess always like, just be on it the whole time. Like, um, be be really going for it the whole mm -hmm, time. Mm -hmm. Not only in the f uh, uh, photography perspective, but also in life in general, like with my kids and, and them learning and them enjoying themselves, like, you know, it just can't get comfortable. It's like there's always things changing. There's things are always, always changing. Nothing stays the same. And you have to adapt or die. Yeah, well, I think that is a, a very good uh, aspect to have as a father, actually, to have that realistic approach. To well, life. you have to because yeah. they were like, they, <laughs> yeah, they will come and say, yeah. but you did yeah. say, but yeah. this and that. So no, they, you, you kind of in it. Eh? You, <laughs> it just comes by, by being a parent, yeah. Tell me, is there anyone that you actively follow in Namibia at the moment or even outside of Namibia? I follow most of the photographers in, in, in Namibia. Yeah. Um, it's also good because I, I like seeing... Um, what the guys are doing. Like, uh, there's a few photographers that I must say I'm very impressed with. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's actually... Um, Namibians. Yeah, yeah, Namibian yeah, cool. guys. Like, cool. Because, That's you good. know, the thing is, like, the, there's the guys that 
That's very cool, actually, because it's up and coming and one yeah, should support them. Yeah, but they also, like, I see they try stuff. It doesn't mm-hmm. always work, but I love it that they're, they're trying it. They're doing it. And yeah. Try, yeah, do like more. They're, they're getting try, like try, the, try. They got the kahunas to get out there and do it. Yeah. So there's a few few that I'm following and that I am really enjoy seeing them flourish. Yeah, I mean, like, it's not I think always also a growing success. Slowly. Yeah, it's not always a success, but I love the fact that they tried that and it didn't work. And they tried that and you can see that there's a... Dr- that I think it's the... The passion and the drive that I'm enjoying seeing, but yeah, I follow quite. A f- I, I follow m- majority of the guys. Yeah, I think. And outside of Namibia, it's something that inspires you as well. Yeah, lo- well, there's a lot of guys think, that I follow yeah. there as well. I can't name them for sure. No, no, I but my phone here. But um, <laughs> there's a lot. I do. I, actually, on my Instagram now, like I've got become brutal. Like if you know, if this person's like half, I feel half mediocre and not inspiring. <laughs> gone and then fill mm. it because that spot needs to be filled with someone who's cool and yeah. like happy <laughs> yeah. Yeah. there's quite a few um commercial photographers that i follow and then a lot more um sort of landscape mm-hmm. and uh wildlife photographers that i also follow because you also like just want to see how it inspires them exactly. how they get exactly. up in the morning that's what, what i just wanted to ask if it inspires you to do more like yeah if you, totally totally like if you can do it damn i should give this just I a try i love the. Uh, i really enjoy um sean tucker i don't know if you know um i really he's a i think he's a, actually was a, he is south african but he moved to the uk and he also does these 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 vlogs and um but he has a a more slow down pace and he kind of talks through and he's again what i love about him is technical psh, throw it out i mean he's a good photographer yeah. but he takes like technical out and he's like what creative it's drive it's um, pursue your you know it's those things it's, he hammers away on those things so he goes deeper than just gear it's like gear is almost <laughs> yeah. like not even it doesn't even come into the play which is great and i really enjoy enjoy his style very, very autistic in a bit of that way. Tell me, once your business is fully fledged, fully running on steroids, which it will never be, because no. you, like you said earlier, there's always a new goal, there's always new mm-hmm. challenges. But do you have you ever thought of having something side ventures or new ideas out of like photography, and then maybe starting something like video or yes. reaching out and, yes. and doing something aside, like a new venture kind of thing? <clears throat> totally. I mean, look, everything always was kind of hooked on I, I really love landscape photography that's my passion um but because that market is so saturated mm. and and stuff but um i always want to, I want to venture something in there which mm-hmm. is related to that um but I also videography is something that's really really interested me for a long time and i've seen like nowadays there is a very much emerge now mm-hmm. most mm-hmm. photographers become videographers and most videographers become photographers it's like the the technical things are slightly different, but the the way you look at stuff and the way mm. you interpret it is very much the same. Um, so I definitely want to venture into that as well. Um, and then um, I still really enjoy design. Mm-hmm. I really love it. Although I don't have time for it now, but I still every now and again like to delve into some design work. Still keep that flame going on the side there. Yeah, so yeah, there is there's a few things that I, I do I definitely want to do on the side, but but it's nothing time. nothing nothing crazy like you want to open a photography store or a renting no, store or no. maybe even go full or all in into yet. something <laughs> not something yet. new no. not yet okay yeah look uh, um, obviously planning for my family's future you you're always open to suggestions and always open to stuff and it's trying to see what's out there and what I can do I would never say no. Mm-hmm. But at this point, not really. It's good to have that. It's also a little extra driving force, right? Yeah, of course. Mm. Yeah, it's like, again, always be on your toes because who knows, like with these phones coming out nowadays on the on the, on the the cameras, you know, like yeah. holy you can, moly, dude. <laughs> you can do a lot I with that. I think someday there's going to be an app to hot, yeah. just like a yeah. just floating phone and take <laughs> oh, a picture. Oh, yes. Like, you know, like, so wait for that to arrive. You never, yeah, the, the with the virtual glo- goggles yes. and I'm just all over the place. <laughs> so, you know, things are changing at an insane rate. It was just try and try and try and be ahead of it and see what... What you can was do. there was there ever in your career a holy shit moment? Like holy shit, this just happened. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in the, in the, in the, in the <laughs> photography, yes, definitely as well, and design as well. I mean, it's I think in the photography sense, um, it happened on a job um, where tech, where my technical know how really let me down, <laughs> and it was for a quite a big brand here, and I'll never forget. I took the picture. And then when it got to go, the client like picked the picture. And that one made a photo. I'll never do that again. Where you learn. I used to take 
you take pictures and you dump it and you send it. Like, and then they pick the one that's out of focus. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Yes. And that performance, I love it. And then, but they get a small picture like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and now they want to blow it up 12 meters. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh my word, what do I do now? Like, uh, you need to pick another one. No, we love that one. Why can't we pick that one? It's like, uh, didn't take it properly. <laughs> so yeah, and then obviously it really looks bad because I was hired via a third party. Mm-hmm. So the chain looks, it looks really bad. And you think, am I going to recover from this? But then, then I said, I, and that was something I also learned. I went out and uh, said to the client, I will not charge you for that shoot. I will reshoot that model. I got the model in yes, again. Yes. I pulled on my cost. I pulled it into that place and location and I shot her again and said, there's the, the thing. Is, is you see, that is, that, that is yeah. the whole thing about freelancing. Take yeah. your responsibility. Yeah, like yeah. I had to take a massive knock. Yeah. Yeah. And the other big thing I did, oh my soul, <laughs> dude, one day, <laughs> my hard drive, well, I have a RAID, like you would have backs up into two hard drives, and I went away. When I go away, I always split the hard drives and put them in safe places so that in case I get visitors, mm-hmm. that it's, uh, it's safe. So I did something, I pulled the one out too soon, and then they didn't, they didn't mirror. But yeah, yeah. So actually, technically, it was a very simple fix. It's a little software you run, and then it sorts it up. I didn't know that at the time. So what I did is I went and I did a reform and pulled the hard drive off the data, and I reboot it, and it took me days. And then for some reason, I had several devices connected, and then I went in, and the thing said, do you want to mount this drive? And I was like, okay, but that one is sorted now. And I said, yes. Okay, it's all done now. After days of cycling, and I just finished a big shoot for an airline here, uh, and uh, I still haven't given them the picture uh, th- at that point. Given them the pictures, and I went into the hard drive, and you know, you click, and sometimes you wait for the files to like. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, you're like oh, <laughs> oh shit, are they they're still there? Are they still there? <laughs> it's blank, and I like, and then it hit me. I formatted all my photos, all of them gone. <laughs> yeah, gone. I I literally just went. No backup. <laughs> Well, the backup was wiped. Oh, so that's, jeez. So okay. Holy <laughs> shit, that just happened. <laughs> <laughs> it took me a, quite a while to calm down. Like, and then, um, because that's I everything. Can imagine. Because I took everything and put it on this thing because this is the backup now. Like, the, and it's backed up twice. So, like, this is it. This is a high. But luckily, I found out that you can uh, recover, recover. recover that. Which cost you most probably some. Well, it cost uh, me... Not a lot, but it cost me time-wise. It cost me until this day. I haven't gone, th- got everything back. Yes, but at least I got the big jobs and the main jobs yes. back. I spent like yes. months getting that back. So there was like <laughs> yes. lesson learned about read. What you say, <laughs> take your time. So yes, yes, yes. Click, click. Let's just get on. Yes, yes, yes. That was I, just, that I was guess that actually falls under the single scariest. <laughs> that was of hectic. And then you get phone calls. I, I mean, weird thing is, you will do a shoot for a client. I'm pretty sure you know this. And then you <laughs> don't hear from that client for two to three years. Right? And then. That happens. You know those photos? Can I have those photos? It's like, um, about that. <laughs> 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 they got you a better place. <laughs> sure, that was, that was very scary. I thought that was me done, eh? Yeah, I, t- I can imagine. Mm. But luckily you could recover it. Okay, luckily, yeah. obviously, with social media as well, I, 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 now what I do is I do a job, immediately um, do a web version of things and upload it. So if that disaster ever happens again, at least I've got something to show for it. That's a good thing also about social media. Like before we used to have books, you'd print the book and you'd rock up 100%. there. And <laughs> or, or clouds or whatever, bar, you can yeah. just upload it to Dropbox yeah, or something. Yeah, now it's all there and see if something goes wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we are about to go into speed round, so let me just do this. And now we're going into the speed round. This is the spot of the... Okay, we're going to speed round. This is the part <laughs> of sessions where we ask as many questions as humanly possible, and our guest, Sean, has to answer them as quickly as possible. If he doesn't get it right, we all in the studio have permission to slap him or beat him with... Tennis rackets, I think that would actually do today. <laughs> so let's get right into it. <laughs> yeah, cool. You can start if you want. Okay, Sean, what are you currently consuming on YouTube? Uh, t- tutorials. Tutorials. Yes. Okay. Cool. I think I made him <laughs> tense. So I made him tense. <laughs> How much do you it's sleep? It's actually Sean Tucker, by the way. There we go. <laughs> How much do you sleep? Uh, probably about, what's it, six hours? Daily basis? Daily basis. Yeah, yeah. on a daily basis, yeah. six hours only. Yeah. yeah. 
Do you follow friends on social media or more business? Yeah, fr- definitely follow friends, but more business, yeah. Are you into Instagram stories? Yes or no? Yes. Personally, also doing Instagram stories? No, more for the business, obviously to get more things out there, but I still got to understand it a bit mm-hmm. better. Is but for the business you do? Yes, 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 purely for the business. So how much time do you spend on Instagram direct messaging? Not that much, I think, because I've because if I've pushed the Insta stories more than that would have go, but yeah, in, in perspective, not that much. Yeah. Are you a sports guy, Jim? Yes. Something in that yes. regard? When, when I try, I really, really try, but it doesn't happen often. Okay. Because of shoots, you come back, you're knackered, and then you like, go to gym, ish. But yeah, I love sports. Especially tennis. So yeah? I can use that racket. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> nice. What, what motto do you live by? Wow. Uh, generally, as a person, I would like to always treat, p- try and treat people, always try to show respect to someone and, and treat them nicely and don't be in a poop all about it. <laughs> like, even know where you are, just try and be a, a, a be respectful of mm-hmm. people and their and their feelings, and then I guess from a from a work perspective, just like graft, 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 hustle, mm. hustle, 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 graft, graft, graft. So okay. look, work hard, work hard. Average working hours per day, um, seven to seven, easy. <laughs> Nice. Actually, yeah. So it's and then like two hours eating something, family, and then maybe when the kids are in bed. Yeah, straight. Still back. with your brain no, back again. Uh, Ninety. Now I'm trying to try and relax a bit more because family is getting a little bit like guys. I want to see you as well. Yes, um, exactly. So 100%. that's obviously family and work is that balance, is, that balance is always is difficult. Really, really, yeah. really, really tough. But uh, yeah, it's usually about twelve to fourteen hours a day, and when the kids in bed, quickly finish off that last. 10 minutes, which ends up being a couple of hours. <laughs> I know that. <laughs> yeah. I just have a half an hour, like, then I must Generally, go. I think about 9, 10, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. But cool. then then you're like, done, done. Cool. Uh, ranking one to five social media platforms, like one being the best, five being the not so much used. I think for, uh, for me, uh, mm-hmm. I think one would probably be LinkedIn, number two, probably Insta, then Facebook, um, and then I'm on Beyond's guess that mm-hmm. also counts. That's probably before five. I'm not sure what else there is. YouTube, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Because cool. I'm not really videography. So, what do you want to ask or say? Anything? I ask for lots and lots and lots of money. It's down in the safe. Ask. I'm not. Ask is, I guess, just generally that people respect what we do as a profession it's our this is our passion and i think people take advantage of that eh? oh my word they mm. take advantage of that because we are passionate about what we do so yeah. they take advantage of that and and uh <laughs> and uh say i guess also just guys must just stop especially in namibia guys just push harder it's just like stop um thinking you take one Th- not necessarily photography, but general. Mm-hmm. Like they think they do something good, and and then like I'm the business. Like guys, look around. You look at around the world. Like there's you, we are. We need to push harder. We need to work harder. Mm-hmm. We need to work smarter. We need to just up our game constantly. Like stop taking mediocre yes. as the next up our own standards. Yeah, totally. I mean, push, 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 and and it'll 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 be awesome for yourself. Cool. Um, anyone that you would suggest for sessions? Sessions? Yeah, for our sessions here. Oh, dude, I don't know. There is, but I think you've actually done that one of the guys already. Okay, yeah. <laughs> we've done a few already. <laughs> but yeah. No, but the yeah, guy Leon, Leon. Yeah, Leon. Yeah. He was on already. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Definitely. Okay. Um, yeah, I love what he's doing. Question as of well. the day is fine. Okay, yeah, and the question of the day. You get to ask the question. You of the get day. to ask. I the get question. to ask the question. Yes. Nobody else in the world is allowed this, this is question. This a question to you. Or is to anyone, to anyone mm-hmm. out here, mm-hmm. anyone at Pro Studio, you get to ask the question, why <laughs> is Namibia still so filled with a lot of freedom? Or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's, that's left field, eh? I don't know, actually. It's almost ex- existential, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, like, I wasn't prepared for or even understood it. Um, no, I don't know, eh? From no. the start. Okay, then we go on. Yeah. Cool. Then uh, any last words, any last advice that you have for the audience, for someone who wants to become a photographer, anyone who wants to step, go and walk the path that you have been walking? Um, definitely, like, passion needs to be there. You need to be in it for the right reasons. Um, 
if you if you're passionate about that field that you're in um, then you're already halfway there I think and then you need to also be committed to do the work because I think passion will drive you to want to be better and and therefore the work will you know come second um, and also I guess um, just keep trying just you know it's not easy it really isn't easy oh my word it's not like you get up in the morning and and, and remember the guys also think that photography is the camera and getting out there and taking a picture, but there's so much more behind it. Like, what is the photo? Why are you taking that picture? What is the subject matter? Why is it? Why do you want to do this? There's so many. Like, it's not just rocking up and taking a picture. Like that is the button part is almost like what's uh, this great wildlife photographer I was watching. It's like that. That's five percent of the whole thing. You know, that's it. It all comes together, but it's that whole everything that came from behind to build that point. So work hard. Be passionate, drive, push yourself, um, and 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 also I think in Namibia we also, as photographers especially, we are like these little cells, and we need to we need to like collaborate more. We need to get together more and understand that we're an industry and we need to be to, um, op- not oppositions but competitors or uh, you know mm-hmm. but, but still we are, yeah and still be some in this under under the same roof and. And like, like, let's do this, guys. Let's do that, and 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 help the guys yes, that, yes, that yes, are yes. coming up. I mean, the other day there was a photographer, exactly what you were saying. And this guy came and he took a picture on um, one of the groups I'm following on Facebook, which is I think photographer in Namibia or something like that. And he took a picture, and and um, he the sun was coming like from behind, and he took a full on flare, and he asked what what uh, you know what do you think about this picture? And everyone, most of the people did say like. Oh, it's amazing. It's a great shot. And I still said to the guy, like, because I, this is what I was hoping to give him was like, loved your enthusiasm, that you are passionate about it and stuff like that. But I would suggest next time, try to do three quarter, let the light hit you from the side that doesn't flare into the lens and stuff. And then the next comment underneath was like, well, at least he's trying, you know, it's like, yeah, they don't yes, understand. yes, that's, I'm trying to help him be mm. better. So I'm giving him I guess what I'm trying to say is give someone positive uh, and, and, uh, uh, criticism, yes, po- um, yes, constructive, constructive criticism, criticism. Yes. Yeah. not just have a like pat- patronizing, yeah, you're great and or something like that, but also yeah, so that they also get actually value out of yes, it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. and then help him. And maybe like the guy's going to be, you know, a great. But if you say he's great. From that, from yes. day one, then the ego goes. Then, up. Yeah, then he's like, he thinks he's yeah, like, yeah. a great shot. The guys, I'm a photographer. Lab, like, yeah. Creative Lab, that's gonna make his status on on Instagram. Creative Lab said, I am great. That means I am. A, <laughs> yeah. Now, now yes. I can. Now I'm gonna start rolling out my career. And, you know, like I'll get the big jobs. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, I guess it's it's all that rolled into one. I guess. Cool. Very cool. And advice, thank you honestly. guys for doing this. This is yeah. this is cool. I hope we can uh, change a bit the mindset of mm. Namibians as well. That's what I love about to change this a bit as well. That you guys are actually you know trying to like bring the creative markets a bit more together and, there and, 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 and educate people because before that was that was it. There was this wall, wall. Yes. between different creatives and also creatives and and and, and uh, your your sort of people that hire you. So this is great. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very Thanks. much for joining us. Thanks it's for having time to come here in for the talk. For all of you guys out there watching this, also do have a look down below in the description. Um, we've added all your links to Creative Lab Woo-hoo. to also check out Sean. A bit. <laughs> do give him a follow. He's an amazing photographer. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Thanks for being here, Sean. And for all of you, don't forget to subscribe. Give us a like. Give us a like for Sean. So yeah, thanks again, guys. And we'll see you all in the next episode. <laughs>